now our third and last topic is diabetes management in diabetic kidney disease and our third speaker dr sudhanshu kumar shaha working as assistant professor bardem general hospital please uh, i now i would like to request our third speaker and our last speaker kamon dias thank you reporter for introducing me respected chairperson of the session respected teachers my dear colleague senior and junior welcome you to this honored gathering i thanks to grand sasth family especially professor brigadier general maun mustafa sir for giving me the opportunity we all know diabetes and diabetic kidney disease is increasing day by day so my topic on management of diabetes in diabetic kidney disease i will talk about introduction brief idea about diabetic kidney disease Management of diabetes in different stages of CKD, monitoring and target, and lastly conclusion. This is the global scenario of diabetes mellitus. It is a slide from IDF, which shows that diabetes is increasing day by day. In 2017, in Southeast Asia, our diabetic population was 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 82 million. 82 million. and it will increase to 51 million by the year of 2045 that is 84% population will be increased this is alarming we all know diabetes has some micro and macrovascular complication kidney involvement is one of the microvascular complication this is the data from us state which shows that diabetes is the leading cause of esrd other microvascular complication of diabetes includes cerebral vascular disease cardiovascular disease diabetic foot problem and diabetic eye disease now what is dkd diabetic kidney disease is a clinical diagnosis based upon presence of albuminuria decreased estimated gfr or both in diabetes now how to screen and when to screen in type 1 it should be started Five years after diagnosis, in type two, add diagnosis. Screening marker two, spot urine for ACR, preferably morning specimen, and easy for estimation for home sample creation. What defines CKD? CKD is defined by persistent urine abnormality, that is ACR more than or equal to 30 milligram per gram, and or EGFR less than 60 ml per minute, and or evidence of kidney damage. This is oil on start oil on slide. All of we are known to this. And in this slide, CKD is categorized according to albuminuria and GFR. My topic of presentation today is management of diabetes mellitus in CKD. I use the GFR according to management. Now, general management. All patients with diabetes should participate in the comprehensive diabetes self management program. that is it includes diet and nutrition physical activity and optimizing glycemic control for obese or overweight patient should intake red, uh, reduce calorie intake and increase physical activity to achieve weight loss this is food pyramid in a patient with diabetes and ckd a patient with diabetes and ckd can consume adequate balanced diet which includes carbohydrate that is rich in whole grain fiber fruit and vegetable and as well as in increase amount of poly and mono unsaturated fat but reduce amount are reduce amount includes refined carbohydrate saturated fat and sodium intake should be less than 2 g per day regarding exercise avoid avoid sedentary behavior to undertake moderate intensity of physical activity for a cumulative duration of 150 minutes per week or to a level of comfortable with their cardiovascular and physical tolerance now treatment treatment include oral agent non insulin injectable agent and insulin now glycemic treatment for all the ckd that is egf for above 30 above 30 type 1 diabetes mellitus treatment is only insulin and insulin all insulin are available in our country but during management the dose should be reduced in ckd patient as ckd progresses dose should be reduced that is 
when GFR above 50, no dose reduction required. But when GFR 20 to 50, around 25 percent. When GFR less than 10, around 50 percent dose reduction is required. Now, oral treatment of oral treatment in patients with type 2 diabetes is greater than CKD with EGFR above 30. Treatment is choice is combination of metformin and then HGL2 inhibitors. Second line, GLP-1 receptor agonist. If with this drug, glycemic strategy is not controlled, then add other drug. But this should be depends upon patient preference, cost, GFR and comorbidity. This slide shows how to start metformin and how to monitor when patient on metformin. Metformin can be started when EGFR above 30, 30 or more. Dose, in a patient with CKD, when GFR 30 to 44, and some patient with a GFR 45 to 59, dose is 1 gram. When GFR above 60, dose is 2 to 2.5 gram per day. And two things should be monitored when patient of diabetes with CKD on metformin. First, GFR and second is vitamin B12 vaccine. Regarding GFR, when GFR 30 to 60, 59, GFR should be estimated every 3 to 6 months. And above 60, GFR estimated yearly. And when patient on metformin for more than 4 years, then vitamin B12 vaccine should be done. Regarding HGL2 inhibitor, it should be started when GFR 20 or above. The importance of this drug are, this is genoprotective and cardioprotective medication. This is the simple guide, how to start HGL2 inhibitor in patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus and CKD. Patient selection is important. First, here also GFR, it should be above 20 and proteinuria, that is ACR more than 20, 200, 200 milligram per gram and potential content indicate are genital infection, genital infection, foot ulcer, diabetic ketoacidosis and patient on immunosuppression. Before starting HGL2 inhibitor, two things should be mind, kept in mind, that is volume status of the patient and patient may develop hypoglycemia if HGL2 inhibitor started along with insulin or other sulfonyl ureas. Now, Regarding GLP-1 receptor agonist, it is the second line choice drug of medication. The importance of this, these drugs are cardiovascular risk reduction drug and it is also drug of choice in patients with overweight and obese. Regarding DPP-4 inhibitor, this drug had no cardiovascular benefit and selected DPP-4 inhibitor can be used according to GFR. Now, glycemic treatment with advanced CKD, that is, patient who are stage 4 and 5 but not on dialysis. Stage 4, in this stage, metformin is contraindicated. HGLT inhibitor can be continued if tolerated. But in this population, HGLP, GLP-1 receptor agonist is good choice because these patients are more cardiovascular risk patients. And insulin and short-acting sulfonylurea are often necessary when medications are contraindicated, not tolerated, unavailable, or insufficient. Now, CKD stage 5, not on dialysis. Here, also, oral drug is choice. Other oral drug is choice, like sulfonylurea, but who, are, who had inactive metabolites and relatively lower risk of hypoglycemia, that is, gilipizide, Glimipride and glycalazide are choice in this stress. Other drug can be uh, can be used like ripaglinide, linagliptin, and cautious use of GLP-1 receptor agonist. Now, treatment of patient on renal replacement therapy. First, hemodialysis patient. In this patient, insulin is choice, but dose should be reduced redu around 50 percent. Around 50 percent. Other drug can be used like sulfonylurea and inagliptin and few data regarding use of GLP-1 receptor agonist. Patient on peritoneal dialysis. 
for patient on peritoneal dialysis who had diabetic control with glycemic medication should be continued with the treatment. For new development of diabetes, oral drug is choice. If glycemic target is not achieved, then add insulin. Now, glycemic treatment in a patient with kidney transplant recipient. In this stage, also metformin is a good choice, but HGL2 inhibitor is usually avoided. And insulin and other agent can be used according to EGFR. Now, this is the comprehensive care in diabetes and CKD. What is comprehensive care? Treatment of diabetes in CKD patient, not only control of sugar, but also control of cardiovascular risks and deter the progression of CKD. For this, we start anti-diabetic drug along with if protein would have persist, then add RAS blockade and maximum dose if tolerated. If still protein would have persist, then, then use newly invented drug that is non-steroidal mineral corticoid antagonist that is phenylalanine. And for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, use statin and antiplatelet. The aim is to reduce the cardiovascular risks and also retard the progression of CKD. And this should be assessed every three to six months. And this is the comprehensive permit in patients with diabetes and CKD. In the base, diet and exercise. Then use anti-diabetic medication along with statin and RAS blockade. For cardiovascular protection, use GLP-1 receptor, mineral receptor antagonist, and also antiplatelet. For further protection, tight control of lipid, tight control of glucose, and also tight control of blood pressure. M to prevent the CKD progression and also retard the and cardiovascular disease reduction. This is the summarization of anti-diabetic medication in diabetes mellitus and CKD. Along among the patients had comorbidity. Metformin is weight neutralizing drug. Importantly, in metformin is weight neutralizing, not weight losing drug. Weight losing drugs are HGL2 inhibitor and GLP-1 receptor agonist. For cardiovascular benefit, HGL2 inhibitor and GLP-1 agonist. For heart failure, HGLT2 inhibitor. Insulin and sulfonylurea, all we know, it is potent anti-diabetic medication, but this drug had no effect on CKD progression or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. This is the dose adjustment of anti-diabetic medication according to the stage of CKD. Metformin is contraindicated below 30. Insulin can be used in any stage, but as CKD progresses, dose should be reduced. The HGL2 inhibitor, it should be used when GFR above 20 or more. And some GLP-1 agonist can be used even in patient on maintenance dialysis like doraglutide, semaglutide and liraglutide. Regarding DPP-4 inhibitor, lilagliptin is safe and it can be used in every stress. Regarding sulfonyl ureas, it should be used cautiously and avoid hypoglycemia. Now, glycemic monitoring in patients with di diabetes and CKD. Three tools, sugar profile, HB1C and CGM. Of this, HB1C is commonly used. An stable diabetic patient it should be done every six month interval. But when patient develop unstable diabetes and frequent change of medication, it should be measured every three months. What is the target? Target of HB1C in patient with diabetes and CKD less than 6.5 to less than 8 percent. That is in early CKD and less comorbid condition target is tight glycemic control that is less than 6.5. When patient is advanced CKD or patient on maintenance hemodialysis, target is less than 8 percent. In a summary, target of management, H1C target less than 6.5 to less than 8 percent, BP target, when proteinuria more than 1 gram, then BP target is less than 125 to 75 and proteinuria less than 1 gram 130 to 80. For LDL target less than 100, preferably less than 70 and BMI 18.5 to 22.9. Now, what are the challenges to management of diabetes in CKD? We all know the HB1C is a good marker for monitoring glycemic status, but HB1C may be unreliable because of eudemia in advanced CKD. Like dextrose in peritoneal fluid can interfere with diabetes management, 
Metabolism of oral drug is disturbed in CKD patient. Change in dietary intake and exercise is typical of CKD. Change in insulin resistance and metabolism of insulin in advanced CKD. So, Mr. Chairperson, my take home message management of diabetes, treat as a whole. Target control diabetes, control blood pressure, reduce CV risk, retard CKD progression. This is my references. Thanks, everyone. Now, I would like to request our two speakers, please come on dice to receive your crest. First speaker, uh, Dr. A.S.M. Inamul Kurin, sir, and second speaker, Dr. Yes, and second speaker, Dr. Shudhan Shukumar Shah, please come on dais. 